The following program is a production of the Fairfax Network. Okay, hey, boys and girls, I have back here a great big chart. What is this? A hundreds chart. It's a hundreds chart, and if we look at this, we can find all kinds of patterns. Can you look at this and tell me a pattern you can find, Jennifer? If you start with the five and go down, it's 15. All you did was just add 10 more, and you go down, it has 25, and each one of the five, um, the ones, it is five is because it's a because you're counting by tens but you just started at a different number so that column you begin with five and count by tens and go down so each number is ten more than the one above it correct uh -huh. okay Megan how about you can you find a pattern in on that board? first column I see all odd numbers and then all even numbers and then odd and then even and it goes on like that doesn't it good pattern there are lots of other patterns too I have with me right here a, a piece of the hundreds board that I've taken off the hundreds board. Now I've cut it kind of out. I've cut it out so that it's a lot of it's missing. But there are some clues there to help us figure out the numbers. Daniel, can you figure out what number goes under that card right there? Because I was thinking, and I don't know if that was ninety. Seven, then that would be ninety-eight. Okay, Number this would be ninety. Seven. How do you know? Because I know that 96 plus one more is 97. And you know that the numbers increase by one when you go yeah. across a row? Good. Let's take a peek. 97. 97. Good job. You know what? There aren't as many clues here. There's not as much to help us. Does anybody know what number goes under that piece? Jennifer? Uh, 75. Why 75? It's 75 is because if you go one up from 85, all you have to do is just minus 10 and it equals 75. So if you start at 85 and go 10 less, it's 75. Also, look at the numbers in the tens place. We see 9, then 8, so that would be 7. seven. And let's look at the numbers in the ones place. There's 5. Yes. Five, and then yeah, five. Let's take a peek. Yeah. There you go. Good job. Let's try one more. Ready? Okay. Okay. Tell me about the number that goes right there. What do you think, Megan? I think it's 15. Why? Because 14 and 16 and 4, 6, so 5 has to be in, in the ones place. Good job. So 15 comes between 14 and 16. What about here? What do you think goes there, Daniel? Uh, uh, I think it's 24 because the 14's right there and it go down one more 10 and it would be 24. That's the pattern that Jennifer described earlier. 10 more than 14 is 24. Very, well, you all did a great job at that. Now, let's see if you all can figure out some of the patterns that we see on these pieces of the puzzle. Can you figure out what number is covered before the door opens? What is the covered number and how did you arrive at your answer? Look. Likes black olives. Pepperoni and black olives. Well, you know what? We've got some pepperoni pizza here. Mm, does it look too good to eat? Mm, no. Uh, I don't think so. But how many pieces has this pizza been cut into? Daniel? Eight. Eight pieces. Do they look like they're all about the same size? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe. So we could say that they're equal parts. So we have a pizza here that's been divided into eight parts that are all equal. Daniel, I want you to take one of those pizzas, pieces and hold it up. There you go. How much of a pizza is this? How much of the pizza is this piece? 
Jennifer? Um, one eighth. One eighth. Why do you say one eighth? Because you started with a whole big pizza, but you cut it into eight pieces, so it has to be one eighth. One eighth or one out of eight. Very good. Daniel, hold on to this piece of pizza. I'm going to get another Whoa. pizza here. Not quite as big as the first one, <laughs> but this pizza has also been divided into eight parts. Would you say that these parts are all equal? Yeah. I would think so. They're about all equal. Now, I'm going to ask Megan to take one of these pieces. A small piece. How much of the piece, pizza does she have? How much of the pizza does Ugh. she have now? Megan? One eighth. One eighth of the pizza, right? Here's a tough one. Wait a minute. You have an eighth. You have an eighth. They're not the same size. I know. Why not? <laughs> because it's just like this pizza has four, and they are one inside, on side, just like this one. Well, why aren't these two pieces the same size? You said you had an eighth, and you had an eighth, Jennifer. It's because um, the first because the first one was big, and the second one was small. That's right. The first pizza was big, wasn't it? And this other one is small. So the size of the fractional part of the pizza depends on what we started with, the size of the whole, right? Yeah. Well, this pizza wouldn't be very good to eat, so we're not going to eat this pizza. But you know what? We do have something we can eat. Let's look at this. I have a piece, big pizza here. And it's been divided up into parts, hasn't it? Are those equal parts? No. No, they're not equal parts at all. If I ask Daniel to take a piece of pizza, Daniel, take a piece. Okay. Oh, you're taking a little piece there, huh? How much of the, does he have one-fourth of the pizza there? No. No, why not? Because it's not equal. The parts aren't equal, so we can't say that that's one-fourth, because although there are four parts, they're not equal. You know, we'll eat pizza no matter how it's cut, but Pascal's a little particular. He only likes things that have been divided into equal parts. Let's watch and see if you can figure out which thing he'll choose. Remember, Pascal only chooses things that are divided equally. Which one do you think he'll choose? Are the four parts of this rectangle really equal in size? How do you know? <laughs> 